Hello, Bryant, and welcome to our final episode for fall semester of the Bryant News Network. I'm Angie Andrews. And I'm Sarah Larrabee. As you can see, we're all decked out. Our whole cast and crew is decked out. We're having a great time today. Ready for the Christmas holiday, or I guess whatever holiday you celebrate is fine with us, too. How about just a break from school? How about a break <laughs> from school, everyone? We just have, you know, a week of finals left. Classes are all done, and we're just moving forward at this point. So, First today on Bryant News Network, we have some holiday themed news with In Case You Missed It and a heartwarming story of a little girl from Providence uh, that Sean's going to tell you about and an interesting episode, I guess you'll stay in Australia that Ariel's going to tell you. Mm -hmm. And I think Santa got a little mixed up with the Festival of Lights. Um, Santa kind of came and gave us sports today. He did. So, yeah, so look forward to Santa telling you all about the men's and women's basketball teams. And don't forget, last week was Mr. Bryant and Mike Bennett was crowned, I guess you would say, Mr. Bryant 2013. Mm -hmm. We did have a debate whether it was 2012 or 2013. We decided on 2013, right? Right, because his reign will be all of next year. Yes, okay. and he is going to be here on the show today to tell you all about how he felt during the competition, break it down for you a little bit, and then also his plans for this year. Because last year, Dave Hurley, you know, told mm -hmm. us his whole walk around in a diaper Cupid plan. So find out. <laughs> and that did happen. And it did if happen. You missed it. So we're going to find out about Mike Bennett's plans for this year. And then finally, we have AJ and a special guest just talking about the holiday, um, what you can watch move on the movie screen or on Netflix. Um, personally, my favorite movie is Elf. I mean, you can't Me too. go wrong. We didn't even talk about this. Me too. And Elf, Elf was at Festival of Lights. Uh, yes. Buddy the Elf was at Festival of Lights. If you did not get your chance to get your picture taken, I'm sorry. Um, but he will be back again next year. And his name is Cam, if you just want to say hi. Yep. At Cam Burke. Follow him on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. Hello, and welcome to the holiday special of In Case You Missed It. I'm Sean Lambert. I'm Ariel Molino. In case you missed it, Anissa Otero, an autistic eight-year-old, walked out of her Manton Heights apartment with her iPad her parents gave her to communicate. Soon thereafter, the iPad was ripped from her innocent hands while she was wandering the streets. The child was eventually found by authorities, however, they were not able to recover the iPad. In an act of Christmas kindness, however, Frank Ferrati, the owner of the Providence Apple Store, donated a brand new iPad after hearing about the girl from Providence Police Department. Where exactly is Mildura, Australia? According to Apple Maps, the city is located in a national park 40 miles away from its actual location. Motorists using Apple Maps to navigate to or within Mildura have become stranded in the national park in extreme heat with no water, making this a life-threatening situation. Apple has promised to rec rectify this issue. In other cheerful holiday news, 34-year-old Peter Zerdan of Cranston attempted to destroy a menorah in front of the Providence City Hall. He resisted arrest and is being held without bail for disturbing public assembly and resisting arrest. The menorah was unharmed, however, and will be lit throughout the rest of Hanukkah. Nearly everyone has heard of the Mona Lisa, but what about Lisa Girardini? Girardini was the wife of a wealthy silk merchant from Florence, Italy, and is believed to be Leonardo da Vinci's model for the Mona Lisa. A team of experts led by Silvano Vincetti recently began a mission to search for and identify the woman's remains. The remains will be tested and then used to reconstruct the facial features to determine if Girardini is the real-life Mona Lisa. Thank you for watching In Case You Missed It. Now over to Chad with sports. Thanks, Ariel and Sean. Last week I mentioned the men's basketball squad won four straight. Now the women's team has won four straight. A true team effort propelled the Lady Bulldogs to a 44-40 victory over the Maine Black Bears. This run is huge for Bryant, especially after starting the season 0-4. They'll be looking to carry this momentum when they go up against Holy Cross. As for men's basketball, they hope to rebound from a tough loss against Navy when they face Dartmouth coming up. By this time, I was hoping to talk about the NHL and my season predictions, but they are still in a lockout and have canceled games through December 30th. The only slightly good news is that according to sources, no one has said the season will definitely be canceled. In previous lockouts, there have been deals made in early January. Hopefully, this is the case. It is mid-December, but there was huge Major League Baseball news. The Los Angeles Dodgers have signed explosive pitcher Zach Greinke to a six-year, $147 million contract. Let me repeat that again. A six-year, $147 million deal contract. In total dollars, Greinke's new deal is the second most lucrative his in history for a pitcher, trailing only the original $161 million deal signed by CC Sabathia in 2009. Anyone have a panic button? Because the Lakers might need it. Kobe Bryant is being Kobe Bryant but this apparently isn't the greatest thing right now. 
The Lakers are 1 in 10 when the Hall of Fame scores 30 plus points a game. I'm not saying Kobe has to stop being Kobe, but the Lakers need to do a better job on defense, especially their transition defense, in order to win games. This team needs to find their identity and it better be quick. How about those Patriots Monday night? Tom Brady and company blew out the Houston Texans 42 to 14. What's crazy about this? The Texans are possibly a top five team in the NFL. The Patriots are on a roll and they're eyeing the number one seed in a home field advantage for the playoffs. Their matchup next week against the San Francisco 49ers will be a good one. And the 49ers defense could slow New England down and they may have a chance. But the pass defense will need to get pressure on San Francisco quarterback Colin Kaepernick. And I think they'll do just that. Happy holidays to everyone, and now over to Bull Talk. Hello, Bulldogs. Welcome to Bull Talk. I'm Super Mario. And I'm Dana. So Bailey can't be with us today because she got ran over by a reindeer. <laughs> but we have Mike Bennett with us here today, Mr. Bryant. Here you go. Hey, y'all. Uh, what's up? So, Mike, tell us about your ex personal experience through the casual wear. Well, so every year they ask us to pick an outfit that we would like to wear that uh, it represents us the way we were in Bryant. So um, this year I went a different route about it. So since it's called the Mr. Bryant competition, you have to incorporate Bryant into it somehow. So what I did was basically um, one of my teammates, he actually started his own company for clothing. So he sells t-shirts, hats, and stuff like that. So I basically bought a hat, bought a t-shirt that said Fade. Cause, um, that's the name of his company, Fade Apparel. And it stands for follow all your dreams, forget all your doubts. So basically, that's what I um, decided to do. I actually wore a t-shirt and a hat with some shades, of course, on stage. <laughs> the other thing with the casual wear to make it more bright is that I brought out a bunch of my friends um, from the different clubs and organizations that I'm part of. So I had them, so I walked out to click. So that's when they came out and followed me on stage. So. That's what I did for my casual wear this year. That's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and for your talent, you mined with your two brothers. Now, what made you decide to choose that type of talent? So, uh, on this campus, I'm known for dancing because I'm on Advanced Evolution. Uh, a lot of people see me dance at late night breakfast, actual shows at Stravaganza, I to I with my actual dance team. Um, so, I was like, yeah, I'm going to dance. But knowing that it was a competition, I'm like, I don't think I should show people what I already do. Since it's been my second year and all, everything too, because I actually did mine last year too. So what I did is basically I mined again and uh, I showed a different side of me. Uh, this is stuff that I do back at home at church. Uh, I actually started the group uh, that consists of me and my brothers and a couple of my members. Like even though they, everybody keeps saying there's my two brothers on stage, <laughs> last year it was both my actual two brothers, but like, the kid that came up instead of from my other brother because he was still trapped at school. Uh, he's a member of my church, but he, I still consider him like my little brother. He always hangs out with us. We always go out together. If I call, if I call him and I'm doing something special, I'm like, yo, you want to come through? He always is with us. So basically, um, my end is like something I really love. And the other thing is like I kind of got my inspiration off with the white paint and stuff from the Jabberwockies when they first went ABDC. Oh. Most people think that I got from KK, which is a famous mime group, but it's not. I got it from the Jab Boys. Boys. Okay. That's very creative. <laughs> Take us through a little bit more of the Mr. Bryan experience. What about for the evening wear? Who was the lovely lady that you got to escort you? The lovely lady was Sarah Cutting. She's a senior. She's on the um, dance team here. Um, basically, uh, I actually met her earlier this year, you know, and I always knew I had to have an escort because you, you know very on early when you're a consensus for Mr. Bryant. So I was basically going through my head like, uh, who should I bring? You know, I have a lot of friends who have been fine of doing it for me, but I also thought about it like this, like, if I ask one, then somebody else is gonna get mad. So luckily, <laughs> I met Sarah earlier this year, so I was like, you know what, I'll just ask her. So I asked her, and she said yes, and she agreed, and uh, of course, she made me even look better on Last Friday, <laughs> if that's even possible, right? Uh, maybe it, it is. It is. What about for the questions for it? I hear that your answer is really what made you win, Mr. Bryant. How did you come up with that? Well, I already know the answers get a little more serious. Like the first set of answers are not serious, but you can answer them seriously because mm -hmm. they're um, scripted to the theme of the show, which was pirate theme this year. And basically, the first question was um, that they asked me is. Um, who would be my first mate? So basically, 
when he asked that question, I'm going through my head like, ah, who could be my first mate? Da, da, da. But then it was easy for me because then I thought about it because she was sitting right in the audience, which is my big sis. So the answer, when I heard the question, I immediately looked in the audience, thought of my friends, but then when I saw my sister, it just clicked and then everything just rolled on. Uh, the second question, you know, honestly, most people don't know this, but uh, I kind of forgot the question on stage. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I ran with it, but I basically still answered the question in the end. Uh, I honestly still don't remember what the question was, <laughs> but I knew it had to deal with my experiences here. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I basically talked about my football team because, like, that was the that was the one group of people who were with me from the beginning to the end of my career. Uh, basically, I came in football, or I came to the school knowing all of them before I knew anybody else. Uh, came up to the spring ball game. That's where I met all my guys in my senior class. Now we're still all good friends. I actually live in like three or four rooms right now <laughs> in my town. So when it came to answering that question, it was it was kind of set and easy, especially me being the senior. And having Almost four years, I have a one semester left, of course. So <laughs> that works well. And then I'm sure what everyone's wondering is, what do you plan to do with your new powers, Mr. Bryant? <laughs> <laughs> the powers. The funny thing is, like, um, I didn't exactly know what to do with my powers just yet, you know. But <laughs> what did happen is that the night of the show, after I won, I'm walking around the townhouses, everybody found out. Hey, Mr. Bryant. Hey, how you doing? Oh, congratulations, you won, Mr. Bryant. Like, ever since Friday, no one has called me by my name. It's just Mr. Bryant. I, <laughs> so I decided to sign stuff, Mr. Bryant. Like, actually, SPB was doing the candy grams, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to send, send this person a nice little candy gram. And I was like, eh, if I signed it, Mike, it'll be too play. Let me just sign it, Mr. Bryant. So I signed it, Mr. Bryant. So I, I, that's one way I use the power. Um, other ways, don't know yet. We'll see next semester when I come back. You know, you never know. Only the future will tell. Yeah. Well, Bryant, that's all we have to, for today. I want to thank Michael Bennett, Sr., Mr. Bryant. Mr. President. For, <laughs> <laughs> for coming on our show, and hope you all have a great holiday. Smile pretty. Thanks, Bull Talk, and a special thank you to Mike Bennett um, yes. for the holidays. Busy time. You're busy. I'm busy. Let's talk about it. Yes. So what I do, kind of what happens this year is you have multiple plans in one night. For example, week four Christmas, you know, you have the boyfriend's party or the girlfriend's mm -hmm. party. You have the party with the friends. And then of course, your parents want you to come home for dinner for something with your grandparents that you don't care about. <laughs> so how do you do it all? First, okay. I'd say, just these are, you know, Angie tips from experience. I Angie know you probably agree. First, always start with the family because you never want to have a couple of cranberry juices and then head to your house. So make sure you always start with the family and then move to the friends after. Well, plus if you're coming home from school, like most of us are, you haven't yes. had your, you know, good quality time um, with your family in a while. So they miss you and I'm sure you'll miss your bed at home. And It's yeah. true. And also what Sarah and I were talking about before the show is if you have multiple parties where eating is involved, eat every time. Why? Because you can. And pace yourself. I mean, food babies, they, they come around the holidays. It's so true, and I also recommend if you have a big night of going out at night for the holidays, why not nap the entire day? Oh my God, I need a nap right now. Tips for success, right? <laughs> nap the whole day, wake up at four, get pretty, get, you know, boys, get sexy, head out for your night, and then you'll be good to go until like two in the morning. You want to know what hits you. And, and it's just a, it's a crazy time. It's a festive time. Um, it it's the only time you can dress like this and get away with it. Yes, I look uh, like a star, actually. Yeah, she opinion. went for the fancy holiday look, and I'm just ridiculous, so it's okay. And good. both are acceptable, I'd say, for many parties. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to do the fun thing, this is great for family, ugly great for sweaters. friends. Ugly sweaters. you got to get your ugly sweater can't out. can't strike out with an ugly sweater. But mm -hmm. I do agree if you're going out with, you know, maybe your boyfriend or girlfriend's coworkers, that's a time maybe where you should dress like a star. <laughs> So, we were here for your uh, helpful tips for today. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to throw it over to our last segment with AJ and Entertainment. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Entertainment. Inez couldn't be here today, so we're joined with Charlie. Thanks for stopping by, Charlie. Thanks for having me, AJ. And come, looking forward to this winter break, uh, Charlie and I are going to be talking about the best Christmas movies that you can watch leading up to the great day. Uh, Charlie, what Christmas movie do you like? Um, my favorite Christmas movie, well, first of all, I'd like to say I'm not a traditional Christmas movie guy. I don't like Rudolph or Frosty very much. Um, my favorite Christmas movie of all time is the one that we watch as a family on Christmas Eve as a tradition, and it's the 1984 A Christmas Carol. It's 
um, a dark story. Mm -hmm. and it's a good story. It's a classic story, and everyone knows it. But it's done really well. And at the end, it's kind of like a happy ending. So I think in that way, it's more Christmassy um, in like a happy sort of way. But so, so you like it, like this version particularly because it's a little bit darker, right? Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen all the versions, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's just the one I'm used to. So interesting. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I feel like everyone has seen Elf and Home Alone, so I'm going to recommend one that a lot of people probably haven't seen. And for me, that's Love Actually, which is, it was made in 2004, and it was kind of what with the first version of Valentine's Day and New Year's Eve. And it's a lot of intertwined couple stories leading up to Christmas, uh, the first four weeks leading up to Christmas in uh, England. And there's Oscar-winning actors in the cast like Emma Thompson and Colin Firth, and then some other great actors that people know, like Alan Rickman from Harry Potter, right. and then Liam Neeson from Taken. And I love the score, which is very Christmassy, and uh, great music, great acting, great script. It's a very fun, enjoyable film leading up to Christmas. Um, and also leading up to Christmas and following Christmas, we have a huge month-long break. So what Charlie and I are also going to be discussing is a way for you to fill that void, and that's through watching some TV shows that are available on Netflix. Uh, a couple that I have to recommend would be AMC shows. They're both AM AMC and they're Breaking Bad and The Walking Dead. Um, Breaking Bad is about a high school chemistry teacher who finds out that he has terminal lung cancer, and so to provide for his family, 